Actually, it's not because she's the business manager. <laughs> anyway, um, I have notes in my phone, and I won't get my phone out in a minute, but I'd really like to try to do this just raw because I think, uh, I think I want you to hear what I feel about this show and about art. And I don't want to look at my art, uh, my notes too much. We live in profound times, don't we? This is a time where liberal arts colleges all across the country are closing down the liberal arts education that I think was the foundation, if you will, was the spike that drove into the rails that created the nation that we are living in today. The well-rounded education, the, the literature, the music, the poetry, the visual arts, sculpture, working in three dimensions, the exploration of the human mind and emotion in art and creation of things. My personal belief is, is that art is an answering back to the universe. In other words, the universe makes a statement to us every day. We walk in this world and we see things and we experience the beauty of life here on this planet. And that is the universe calling to us. And as artists, we have special receptors that many of our fellow people walking beside us do not have. We have the ability to hear what creation says to us, and we have an obligation and actually a pleasure, a joy, to be able to listen to that, interpret that, and shout it back to the universe, but to our fellow man. And I don't want to be sexist here, but you, you get my point. But that is what art is. Art is a response to an initial uh, stimulus. So if you're here tonight and you have a painting on this wall, this is not just a great thing, you know, a great social community event. This is a profound moment. It's a profound moment where your statements about this world get to be presented to the world. So congratulations to all of you who are on this wall. So those of you who are not on the wall but are here, keep going, keep going, keep showing, keep putting in, keep putting it out there because every voice, every voice needs to be heard. We are the voice, we are the translators of beauty for our world. And if we are silent, the world will not know what beauty is because we help them understand that. So keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Tonight is not about giving awards. It is a function of what we're about to do, that's for sure. And it's really cool to, to win awards. I've had that pleasure a, a lot of times, and it's really cool. But what this is, is tonight is a celebration of the fact that we are, as artists and as communities, putting out there our vision and our desire to create all that. So it's a celebration. And I would hope that you will join me in celebrating all of the artists who are going to be recognized above the others, just a little bit. But any one of these paintings, I could build a case for. And when I juried this, that was a very difficult process. When I look at paintings to jury, to jury into a show, the very fundamental thing I look for is, do they tell me a story? And, you know, as I stand and I look across the room, is there a story that's shouting at me off the wall? And am I engaging in that story? That's the first thing I look for. If you're a good storyteller, poets, musicians, writers, painters, sculptors, we are good storytellers. So I look for a good story. I look for a good story above and beyond even craft. And I'm not minimizing craft. Craft is very important. And it's very important that you pursue craft to the utmost level that you're capable of. Just keep going, keep going, keep going. But primarily it's story. And how do we tell stories? Edgar Whitney said that, he's a great, I, you may know who he is, but if you don't know who Edgar Whitney is, way back in the, I think it was 40s, 50s, 60s, he was uh, practically revered as a god in the watercolor world. Wrote many books and had profound influence on many painters, Tim Das, uh, Frank Webb, just to name a couple, but I could go down the list and there are 
hundreds of artists that this man, this one individual, had influence on. Edgar Whitney said that artists are collectors of shapes. Think about that for a minute. We are collectors of shapes. Now, what does that mean? I'll tell you what it means to me. It means that we look out into the universe and we've been trained by our education to see an apple, to see a car, to see a tree. We, we have replaced image and shape with the literal word that we were taught that that word represents that shape or that thing. Artists have a way of coming through the educational system and we, we, we start to think about before you even knew language, you saw shapes as a human being. Then you learned the words. You stopped looking at shapes, right? Because the words were easier or we were trained to just think about the universe in terms of the words that we had around us. And we missed so much. Artists, and if you're an artist, you at some point had some kind of a transition moment where that shifted back for you. Where you began to see the world in shapes, colors, lines, and you began to express that, or, or you wouldn't have these paintings on the wall. So shape, story, those are the things that I looked for when I judged this show, during this show. Now I'm going to look at my phone. Uh, those are the important points I really want to punch home, but um, the world around us has trouble seeing. And I think the more, I'm not trying to denigrate a math, science, technology, education, or existence. Please hear that. But our world has flipped. And those, those influences have become primary. And because they're primary, we're losing the ability to look at our societies holistically. To look at them as shapes and look at them as forms, and to look at them as color, and, and to understand them that way. We look at them as percentage points on a spreadsheet. And it's easy to, uh, it's easy to have a, have an, I'm going to use the word, an oppressive influence on our brothers and our sisters because they're a lower percentage than we are. Artists, can, we do not see the world that way. We cannot see the world. And we are the people, we are the eyes and ears and voices that, that, that shout out to our culture and our society. There has to be more. Um, <clears throat> Colorado is big sky country. And, uh, this is my back pocket, I don't like it. It's big sky country. Colorado is a state that has as its just living here, it's hard not to live here and not see things as expansive. It's hard not to live here, not see things as beautiful. Uh, we are we are a very unique uh, place in the union of our states. So when when we put together the Splash of Colorado show, we encouraged you as artists to bring out your best expression of Colorado, the Splash of Colorado. So when I looked at these paintings, I looked for what story tells me about Colorado and invites me to be expansive in my thinking. And when I looked at the top six or what the, the six that we chose, I chose them for those three basic reasons. <coughs> and so if I saw a story, if it, if it caused my heart to expand, if you will, and if it had a great integration of shapes, it was, it was up there and, and, it, and it needed special recognition. So that's how I juried the show. And I'd be happy to talk with you about it. Um, Afterwards, but let's get on to celebrating six top artists in a room of top artists. Karen?